Hello everybody, it's Angel. I am here in Sedona, Arizona with my mom and my grandma and we are having a wonderful visit. While I was here, we decided to do a legacy video where we each asked each other some questions, recorded it. This is uh, gonna be a wonderful thing for our family, you know, making memories and capturing memories. And I thought that I would invite you guys to watch and that way you can kind of learn a little bit about, you know, my family and who I am. So uh, here is the video that we recorded. And during the video, we had a little technical difficulties. So the video was filmed over two days. One of the questions was asked uh, when the camera had shut down. So it got asked again and I already knew what the question was going to be. So it's not, as it was, <laughs> I knew what was gonna happen with that one. So if that makes any sense, but um, I hope you enjoy and uh, here's our family legacy video. Thank you. Hey, it's Angel. I am here in Sedona, Arizona with my mom, Debbie, and my grandma, Alice. And we decided that we were gonna shoot a legacy video and just kind of ask each other questions we've never asked each other before and record the answers and just making a, a video for us to keep for our family and you know whenever we miss each other we can watch it and remember how much we love each other and so um i think grandma should be the one that gets asked the questions first. Okay. I ask the questions first. No, I'll ask you. Oh, I'll good. ask you. Good. I'll ask I, you. Might, I might want to change my. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, how about you ask a question and then I'll ask a question and we'll just go back and forth. We've each uh, got together five questions for each one of us. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, you're starting? You start. Oh, I start. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite vacation that you've ever taken? Oh, gee. Oh, my gosh. Probably the trip that we won to Europe. <laughs> I told you! <laughs> I was met in Hawaii. <laughs> well, that was, that was almost the first one, instant. And I remembered the... the uh, trip to which we got to go to um, England, Spain, France, and Germany. All expense paid. <laughs> For? Oh, uh, Continental Airlines because they had uh, through Airbus industry had uh, bought some airplanes from Airbus and so to, to show their appreciation they had a big drawing and there was 30 of Continental employees, which you're talking about out of thousands of people, and they got to take their traveling companion. And I was really nice to Chuck for several weeks because <laughs> I wanted to be his traveling companion. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. All right. If you were laying down to go to sleep and you were thinking in your head, about what would be the perfect dream for you to have, what would that be? That's a funny question because <laughs> it's recently I was telling them a dream that I had just a couple of weeks ago that was outstanding and it involved the softest cat that I had ever felt in my life and the cat was so contented as it was sitting on my lap, I could feel it purring. And that has stuck with me because of the contentment and the sound of that cat. It was peaceful. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite childhood memory? When I was five years old, my mom and dad had 
I had an older brother and a sister and a sister just younger than me, but she was five years younger and she will always tell you that. <laughs> and so I did not, just me personally, get to spend a lot of time with my dad. And one day he was going to go down to the grocery store, which was several blocks from our house, and he took me along with him. And we bought, it was just to get one item, and it was a jar of honey. And I enjoyed walking down to that store with my dad and back home. All of my childhood favorite memories are with Grandpa. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some with Grandma, but Don't mainly Grandpa. Me and him, you know, coming up with our weird things we wanted to do. Are we are we crying this early in the video? <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to add also, we had, I had a grandmother, which would be her great-grandmother and her great-great-grandmother, and we all called her Maggie. She was a wonderful person, a fun person. She loved life. and Intelligent. She, uh, she made each one of us children special. We made she made us feel special to her, and so even now we she liked me better and she liked you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good memories with her yeah. as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, um, my question is: as a child, who was the one person you enjoyed spending the time spending time with? And why? Like Maggie. Yeah. <laughs> she she lived in a a, a two story home, and uh, <laughs> she let us drink coffee. Now we're talking about coffee that that time had the grounds in it and et cetera, et cetera. But now I will say she put a lot of cream in the coffee, but she made her own syrup, and which was made out of uh, water, sugar maybe a tad of vanilla yeah too. and she would either fix toast usually toast because biscuits was a little bit more complicated and we so we would have coffee and the homemade syrup and the toast with lots of butter okay I got to add the very first cup of coffee I ever had in my life Maggie gave me when I was six years old <laughs> And, you know, I ended up finding out later with her that hyperactive kids, to calm them down, give them coffee. No sugar, <laughs> but give them coffee. The coffee. <laughs> yeah. And so she knew exactly what she was doing giving us kids coffee. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Your turn. Okay, my turn. Okay, let me look at my list here. Where was your favorite place to live? Oh, gee. The whole, just as growing up, but the whole, my whole Your life. whole life, the favorite place to live? Probably a close one to the other. I loved Santa Fe, New Mexico, yeah. which we did not live there very long, but it was awesome. I And I love that house. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. We planned on retiring and living there the rest of our lives, but God had other plans for us. But that would that was that would be my choice. It's a beautiful place, the climate's awesome. Um, probably that would be it. Yeah. All right. If you could give all of your children, grandchildren, great grandchildren and great great grandchildren Which you are <laughs> Three bits of advice to help them live a full and happy life, what would it be? The first thing is turn your life over to God and let Him lead your life. The other is to find peace and joy, and the way you're going to do that is through God. But also to, on your own, really read and study God's Word especially Proverbs and Ecclesiastics, because that will tell you how to live. Okay. Cool. My <laughs> turn again. Okay. What intrigues you? How to run a computer and a cell phone. <laughs> 
about life in general. <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, computers, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it is. I'm learning just today, you know, how often awesome these things are. But it's um, kind of over my head a lot. But it is intriguing to find out what you can do with these things. Like and, this. Yeah. <laughs> and um, also the lives of my my grandchildren now. My kids, I'm learning. I found out a lot about my daughter today. <laughs> <laughs> but my my grandchildren and uh, my great grandchild, my my great great grandson, uh, they're intriguing. And um, but I wish for deep, deep happiness, peace, and joy for all of them. Oh God. <laughs> Well, it's from my heart. Yeah, well, that's what we're asking yeah. for. Your turn. It was my turn? I, okay. Uh, no, was that your turn or my turn? Um, No, that was my turn. That's your turn. Okay, <laughs> so it's time for my last one. Any regrets? Oh, yes, but we are not going to go into them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there are. There's a lot of regrets, but... I cannot say certain things or certain people because I have got my three children, which I deeply, deeply love. My granddaughter is very special. My grandsons, I've got a new step grandson, and uh, then my great grandsons, they're mm -hmm. a joy. But the baby, little Dominic or Nicky, they, he's been called different <laughs> names, but uh, it, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> cool. How come I have two more questions left, and that was your last question? I don't know. Okay. Well, what is the mo? Uh, what is the one thing that most stands out to you that has changed in the world since you were young? Probably cell phones. Probably. Okay. And I'll read my last one. Um, in your whole life, what was the most exhilarating thing you've ever done? Oh, gee. You mean as far as the excitement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember the time we went out to the little airport in Austin and uh, Chuck volunteered me to go up in the airplane? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and which sounded good at first, but it turned out the pilot was doing loop to loops and rolls and yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I remember that day well. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> I got off that plane with white knuckles and would never do it again. But it was exil it was fun. It was fun. Looking back. 51 years later. It was fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so mom's turn? My turn. Okay. So you want me to go first? Yes, because I tried to explain to yeah. you. I Grandma's know. got a few questions she's going to ask later. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Do you have any for mom? Uh, you want me to start? Uh, well, I mean... I, I've got five, so do you want me to go first? And You could, because I've got some. Is it all right if I ask you both the same questions? Which yeah. When it comes, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. All right, go ahead, because I've got a okay. couple. Okay, I'm on the frying pan. You are. You are. Make it hot, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the strangest thing you have ever done? Uh-huh. I guess I would have to say when I walked on fire. Yeah. I walked on fire. <laughs> uh, there was 15 feet of hot burning coals. And I kept telling the guy, I have no interest in walking on fire. If you teach a class on walking on water, I'll be first in <laughs> line. But I have no wish at all to walk on fire. And so he, he asked me to just be there and participate. I didn't have to walk, yada, yada, yada. 
and everything went fine. She was there. Everything went fine until one little boy decided he wanted to walk on fire. And so he started walking on fire and he got burnt. Oh. And he got burnt bad. You know, because you have to concentrate on your mind frame to be able to do it. And he just couldn't hold the thought. And nobody else wanted to walk after he burned. Okay. And for some reason, the guy that was running it came and stood right in front of me. And he says, if no one walks again, we're going to have to put the coals out, you know. And he ended up walking around to the first, to the front of the, the fire pit. And I found myself standing right next to him. And I started walking across the coals. I was looking at a star that was doing really weird things. And I just started walking across. And the next thing I knew, the other guy that was running it had to walk in, grab my hands, and pull me out. And they told me it wasn't long enough for me. And I was standing there walking in place. Oh. Uh. And after I did that, then more people walked. But then she said she wanted to walk, and I put my foot down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not running you to the Thank emergency you. room. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So that would be it. Okay. Do I go? Yep. Okay. What would you want me to ask you that you think would help me to understand you more and better. <sighs> That's a hard one. Uh, what I do for a living, or what I did for a living in the church. Okay, fair enough. Because you were fair talking enough. about that yeah. yesterday, yeah. and yeah. this is the time to answer it. Uh, I started out on the spiritual pathway, you know, a, away from the Baptist church. Uh, years ago years ago and all of a sudden out of the blue i realized that i could read astrology charts uh, a woman had asked me to read a book to show her how to do it and i ended up reading the book and it's like all of a sudden it, it was like i was downloaded with information and just started doing astrology charts for people and um i went to psychic fairs and it was an easy way to make extra money for raising her and you know I did readings and then years later I was at a friend's house and it was winter time and it's like I'm sitting in her chair and the next thing I know I'm sitting on her couch and I'm freezing and I'm looking at her and I'm asking her what ha you know, what's going on? Did I miss something? What's going on? And she said, no, someone came through your body and started talking to me and telling me this highly spiritual stuff. And it confused me. I mean, I had read books about channeling before, but it was like conscious channeling. And I ended up finding out that I was what is referred to as a full trance medium. It means my body would go into a trance and higher entities would come through and spread messages. So when we started the church, I did three channelings a week and one of the channelings a week was public and people could come in, they could hear the channeling, they could ask questions, and they could receive money. And I ended up here uh, channeling for 10 years, uh, where I'd go into a full trance, and then these you know, higher beings would come in and talk to people. And almost everything came true. 
that they predicted and talked about and stuff like that. And so we put together uh, one series that they did was called um, Ascension Lessons. And it's a whole series. It's online. You can read them, you know, and everything else. But the problem with being a full trance medium is it <coughs> hurts your body. You know, because one, when I would come back from a channeling, I would be ravenous because it burns so much energy in your body. And uh, we ended up with the Ascension Lessons, then we had the Master's Classes. We've got all kinds of channeling out. And the Ascension Lessons we offer freely, you know, on uh, the website, but we tell people that Sananda told us that people should pay us a minimum of one dollar per lesson that they read online. So we tell them that if they pay us, fine. If they don't, they're bad karma. You know, and it has, even though I quit channeling ten years ago, uh, People are still reading them. They're still following them. They're still they they tithe to us. They give us money. They go on. They read the lessons, and then they want to donate more money because they're they're really impactful. So now I'm more retired. I'll do readings for people in person or online, but you know I don't do the channeling anymore because it it destroys your body. It ruins your teeth. When I studied with the youths up in Salt Lake, uh, the shamanism classes, they tell you, you work with high energy, the first thing it goes is your teeth. Huh. You know, it just eats up your teeth. So, your turn. My turn. Okay. As a child, what was the thing, hobby, activity, or subject that you were most passionate about? Writing. Writing. Uh, I can't remember when I started writing, mm. but by the time I was in fifth grade, I never had money that I could buy birthday cards for my friends or buy them presents or anything like that. So I would write a story, a personalized story where they would find and meet their favorite movie star, you know, or singer or whatever, fall in love and get married. And they loved these stories that I wrote for them. And when I went back to Missouri uh, in 10th grade, uh, a girl came up to my table in the cafeteria one day and she said, Debbie, is that you? And I went, I'm Debbie, <laughs> who are you? And she told me her name and I recognized the name. And I went, oh my gosh, I went to school with you over at the junior high in seventh grade. And she went, yeah. She says, do you remember the stories you wrote for me? And I didn't, but you know. And she said, I'll tell you what, you meet me in the cafeteria tomorrow. I've got something I wanna show you. And the next day, she came up to my table in the cafeteria and she set a book in front of me and there was my name on the cover and the title was Selected Stories by Debbie, you know, and her she had read those stories so many times they were falling apart. So for one of her birthdays, her mother and father took the stories to a oh, publisher, God. a publishing house, and had them format it and bind it, and they're in a leather so cover. A published author? I'm a published <laughs> author. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on. I had it a while ago. Ask her now that I'm going to look for Okay. It. What in your daily activities brings you the most joy? Pearl's Perils. Huh? Oh, <laughs> Pearl's yeah, Perils. Yeah. But it isn't just that. I mean, uh, I've reached an age where I can't type anymore. And with my back and my knees, I have a hard time sitting in my office chair for any length of time. 
So I got my iPad <laughs> in January and I have discovered Pearl's Perils, June's Journeys, Mahjong Journey, and uh, Era Slots. <laughs> Those are my favorite things to do because they keep my brain occupied where I'm not feeling the pain. Right, right, that's understandable, right. Is there any way that right now, today, in this instant, because like you said, we do not know previously what these questions are going to be, what you would like to be doing 10 years from now? I'd like to be dancing on the pearly gates. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, if I have to stay here for 10 years, I would like to win the lottery. I would love to build me an adobe home. That's what our home is going to be, an adobe home. That makes sense. And uh, I'd like to have my grandson close by, my daughter close by, and my great-grandson close by. Where I can be with family because I have to be in the desert for my arthritis. And, you know, they're nowhere near me. But, you know, it's like, I knew. You know, she didn't dependent. include her mother in on that, and here I'm trying to find well, a way. Well, she'll be 92 <laughs> years old then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are your top five bucket list items? I like that. <sighs> that's win hard. A lot of, oh, no, that, that's, yeah, not, that's yeah, a wish. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, wish. that's okay. a wish. Um... I'm very limited in what I can do because of everything that's wrong. So, there, you know, now my ideal thing that I want to do is I want to get on a cruise ship in Florida. And I want that cruise ship to go all the way to Rio de Janeiro. And I want to watch the northern constellations change into the southern constellations. Because I have never been able to see the southern constellations. And in fact, the second item on my bucket list, the solar cross. I want to see the southern cross. What's that? It's, See, the southern constellations are put up together to be like Jason and the Argonauts on okay, the quest yeah. to get the, the Golden Fleece. And the, the southern cross is a perfect alignment of stars in a cross. Um, and I think you can only see it in the Pacific Ocean oh, or okay. something like that during certain times of the year. But uh, it's the mast of the Argon. The Southern oh, Cross. Wow. It's the the top, very top of the Argon, the ship, the Argon, and Crosby, Still, Nash and Young, my one of my favoriteest groups of all times, sang a song called the Southern Cross. And when I first heard that song, it was like, what's the Southern Cross? So I go to the library and I look it all up and I started reading about how the constellations were different and everything. And I was, like, I want to see the Southern Cross. Huh. One more. Just give me one, one more. more. I won't make you do three more. Just <laughs> one more. One more. My bucket list. Uh, I would love to write my best, my life story. I mean, it's hard to do it now, but maybe with the iPad and my stylus, I can do it. Because I think, now there are people that are going to have to pass away before I can do this, you know. <laughs> Me. <laughs> because there are things that would be in it that, you know, might upset you or something like that. So, I mean, it's like, yes, I would love to write my life story because there isn't one soul on this planet that would read that story and believe that everything in there happened to that one person. So how's that? <laughs> and she does embellish a little bit. <laughs> 
she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you have any more? Got, got one more. Got one yes. more? Um, is there something that you wish that I knew about you, but you don't know how to tell me? <sighs> I think she did this morning. <laughs> well, that was part of it. That was part of it. Uh, I have a lot of questions that have never been answered. And um, it's just one of those things that I can live without those answers. Good, because you're not going to get them. Yeah. I mean, I can live without those things. But I think that there is a lot in my past and my raising and that is hard to talk about. Is all right, here we are, day two. We had technical difficulties yesterday at the end of the video, so we're going to start off the video uh, for day two now. Okay, it's my turn to ask her question. Do you have any regrets about putting about adopting a Colton out? No, no, I do not. Uh, full disclosure, this question was asked yesterday before the we realized that the camera wasn't recording anymore so and we were all crying we were all crying <laughs> it was very emotional uh no i do not uh have regrets about that at all uh colton is everything that led to colton's adoption was a god moment it happened exactly how it was supposed to happen and colton has been where he was supposed to be every day of his life and uh, I think Colton's life is so much better for it. Um, I also, if there's anything that I want my boys to learn in life is I want them to know that I live my life with no regrets. I just try to learn from everything. And I feel like if I, even if I made a wrong decision anywhere, as long as I learned from it and became a better person. That's right. That's right. It is still the way it was supposed to be. Yes. And I fully agree with you on what you did. You did the perfectly right thing because he is wonderful. I mean, he, you know, and having an open adoption you were a part of his life and Dominic was a part of his life and I and and Craig and Donna needed Colton they needed Colton and Colton honey we love you amen <laughs> okay 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 I am going to re repeat the question to you that I ask your mother Okay. Because it's important to me. Okay. What would you want me to ask you that you think would make me understand you more and better? Grandma, I don't think there is a person on this planet that understands me and knows me as well as you do. That's true. I couldn't That's imagine anything that I could expect you to ask me that would enlighten you to who I am any more than you already are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but in case you don't know, she's my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her and I loved being with her, but I didn't want her. <laughs> right. <laughs> but thank you for being there that I was very much a part of her life. That was awesome. Yep. And moving her up to where you were at a year old helped tremendously. She needed grandma and grandpa. It did me. <laughs> well, it let you go out and buy more stuff. 
that you made me keep most of it at my uh -huh. house. Do you honestly think I wanted a, 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 a Kermit drum set in my house with all the other loud things that I had to contend with while I was in college <laughs> trying to study? Why no, not? you got to keep it. <laughs> okay. Okay, my turn. Okay. In all of the places that you've lived, what is the favorite place that you have lived in? The sailboat. The sailboat. The sailboat. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I loved it. I slept so good. The sailboat rocking me to sleep. I got to sit on the boat and drink coffee and watch dolphins play and... You know, I just really enjoyed it, even though it was very short. It was definitely one of my all-time favorite places places to live. Good. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I had totally forgotten about Florida. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to have to read this so I can understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Since you were actually... Born in Texas, that makes you a pure, true blue, honest to goodness, dyed in the wool, not a transplanted Texan, <laughs> but a true, true Texan. Texan. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of the pride, the overwhelming, I'm a Texan <laughs> and proud of it? Type I, feeling. <laughs> I am. I have. I'll, you. I only lived in Texas for a year, and uh, it always was a kind of a wonderful, exotic feeling to tell people that I wasn't born wherever it was that I was living at the time, and that I was born in Texas, and. Uh, as an adult and getting to visit Austin and realizing what a cool city Austin is. It's probably the only city I would ever think about living in Texas. You know, it's, you know, it does make me proud. It makes me proud that I'm from not just, you know, the capital of Texas, but it's also a really big city that, um, when it comes to music influences and stuff like that and I really do you like watch that. Austin City Limits I have a lot <laughs> I have I'm, too and I'm not a natural born I'm a huge Jerry Jeff Walker fan <laughs> oh no no <laughs> well that's 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 awesome mm -hmm. because I have really been curious about that because is it a true thing or is it just but apparently it's a true dynamo <laughs> I'm a Texan. I'm a Texan. Yeah. I'm a natural born <laughs> Texan. Uh, okay. In your life, has there ever been anything that you were afraid to tell me? No. You know, you... No. Because we talked all the time. No. All the time. Never been anything ever. Even as, like, a teenager, you know, I had friends that were hiding stuff from their moms all the time, and I never... No. No. We always... Yeah. No. Well, I just wanted to find out. I think you would know that. <laughs> well, I mean, you never know for sure. You know, you never know for sure. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we have had a bond that I have never felt before. You know, you came for me. You're, I, I didn't want you. <laughs> I never wanted to have kids. And when I found out I was pregnant with you, you were a parasite. You were the ultimate parasite. And when you almost died, when you were born, I 
you know, I started saying, okay, God, I am not going to go through 10 months of pregnancy and go through everything that I had to go through with pregnancy and you're going to take her away? And that's when I became your mother. That's, that. I mean, it was like God himself was not going to take you away from me. I had all the sisters at the hospital praying for you. They had their priests praying for you. And Anne had a Baptist minister praying over you. Your godfather had his um, rabbi. His uh, rabbi talking to you. I'm praying for you. He named you into a tribe of Israel. You know, I mean, that whole town, it seemed like, was praying for you for those 12 days that we didn't know if you were going to live or die. You know, and that was my battle with God. It's like, Okay, I'm a mom now. You made me a mom. You're not taking her away from me. And a miracle happened because they were going to have to remove your left lung. And over because the doctor told me, he says, if she's still bad in the morning, we're going to have to take the left lung. And Overnight, you know, the next thing I'm pre prepared for him to tell me that you're in surgery. And the doctor sat there and he said, it is a miracle. He says that left lung just reinflated itself all on its own. You know, he said, she's going to be fine. She'll be able to leave in a few days. You know, and two days later, I took you home. But... Oh, well. Yep. Is it my? No, it's your it's turn, my turn. Yeah. Now, you wanted me to remind you to ask a question. I did. Okay. I just did. Okay. <laughs> Is there one particular incident or one particular person in your life that you think actually was a person, place, or thing that changed your life to make it what it is? Wow. That's a deep question. It is. I've had three days to think about it. <laughs> um, I can imagine my life without any one of the people. And I think it's been a compilation of everybody I have ever met that is, you know, Help me become who I am Influence. today. Yeah, yeah. perfect I, answer. <laughs> That's great. Good. Yeah. I don't think I'd be the same person without any one of them. Okay. Now we've been doing a lot of talking over the. I mean, a lot of talking over the past days that you've been here, and. I have shared things with you and Grandma that you may not have known before or any. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I have known everything you've shared. There's not been no, any I, new no, news. I, 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 <laughs> well, I, what I'm getting at is the question is, now we kind of disagree on how much Native American blood Maggie had in her. Okay. No, That's it's not, not the question. It did. It's not that, that we disagree. It's that there's been DNA tests and we're trying to understand the DNA exactly. tests. Exactly. Okay. So, your passion for gardening, do you intellectually think or emotionally feel in any way whatsoever that that is inherited from Maggie because Maggie was the exact same way. Her that's, garden was everything. That's the only person that I know of. Um, now I don't know much about my dad's side. I know his grandma was a gardener, um, but I don't know much about that. But growing up, and I've always heard about Maggie and her garden. And, but I never met Maggie. No, ever. I was only 14 when she died. Yeah, I never met Maggie. And, you know, 13. Grammy, her garden was uh, very utilitarian. It was like a chore she had to do yeah. every spring 
to plant her garden to make sure that she had food to grow and you never had a garden that I ever remember and you say you had a garden but I don't remember you ever having a garden so I don't know where it came from just like I love to sew you know that that that's didn't come from Wilcox. either one of you and that's grandma that's grandma well I wasn't Wilcox. around her very much well, either. yeah but I know but mm. You know, it, the, I mean, there's passion. I, I believe that there are passions that we have that come through the DNA. You know, like Grandpa and his wheeling and dealing. It, it's like, you know, people tell me, I have never met a person like you before. No one is a stranger. You talk to people as if you've known them for years. And you have so much fun, you know, doing garage sales and stuff like that. That's, I know that's genetic tie into oh, Grandpa. That's, that's the Baker blood. That's the Baker yeah. blood. I don't know a single Baker that isn't like that. I don't know a single yeah, and, child of a Baker or a grandchild of a Baker that isn't like that. So do that. you think it's learned or inherited? Is it, it learned from family or inherited? That, that would be so hard to say because even with uh, Colton, you know, he's born with the Baker blood and then he was raised in a Baker family. <laughs> yeah. so, and his name is Baker. <laughs> and his name is Baker. So, you know, it's, he's, it, it would be easier to tell if, uh, if Craig wasn't from the Baker the side. Craig, but, you're right. you well know, I, other than that, I think we've all, because... You know, one of my very first memories is us going shopping at Tip Tiffany's. Tiff <laughs> I forgot about that. You Tiffany's know, where we call garage sales. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that. Because everybody asked me, where do you get? Oh, to Tiffany's. Yeah, Tiffany. <laughs> yeah, and so, and so <laughs> you know, Saturday morning, so I'd spend the night with you, and we'd wake up, and you'd say, we're going shopping at Tiffany's, and we'd go to yard sales, and I'd come up to you with a little Barbie doll that I wanted and I would be like grandma they say they want a dime for it and she would hand me a nickel and she would say go get your Barbie <laughs> and she would give it <laughs> you know so I mean that's hard to say it's hard to say if um if that if is it's the influences or, or the DNA yeah exactly and as far as as far as Maggie is concerned I mean it's not just that I grew up knowing I had a Native American grandmother that had a garden, but I also grew I up a garden. <laughs> that I also grew up going to powwows and going to sweat lodges and going um, uh, spending time in you know with Native American people and learning their traditions and things like that. And I grew up. In that way too, and I mean, both of my parents are hippies, and <laughs> you know that's just a genetic thing. And I feel like the gardening and the growing plants, and is it's my responsibility to be more in control of my food source in the in the society that we have today, in this Especially. grocery store society where you know, our food source is so broken, and you don't know where it's coming from, you don't know what it has been you know sprayed with you don't know exactly. what those chemicals exactly. are doing to your exactly. body you know i just feel like it's you know part the hippie be, being raised by hippies and <laughs> being raised in this more natural environment but i mean i just i just feel like and it's not just a responsibility i don't look at my my garden like grammy did where hers was very utilitarian, you know? I mean, I can see where that can happen, but I truly enjoy growing things. Well, that and, was Maggie. And, and was I Maggie. truly enjoy learning about the, the health benefits and the medicinal benefits and the, you know, just all the different things that these plants can do for our body and the right ways to use them. and. You know, I just really, truly enjoy that. May I, I give an example okay. of Maggie? Well, we do have a, a Maggie I, I know. Video I'm today. just going to do this real quick, and she's here to validate. Mm -hmm. Maggie came down to visit us in Austin, 
and I was only about seven, mm -hmm. eight at the time. And Maggie wanted more than anything to go see President Johnson's ranch. Oh. And so we Damn drove that. her Dallas. to President Johnson's ranch. And there was a big, huge chain link fence oh, that yeah. surrounded the whole compound and she knew she couldn't get in the compound. So what she did is there were vines that were growing up through the chain link. And she pulled up a couple of vines, she spit on the roots, and she wrapped them up in paper, you know, in, in newsprint. And then she took those home, and about a week late, you know, after she pulled them, she planted them out around her front porch. And she would tell everybody, these vines came from President Johnson's compound. <laughs> I, I, and she could have got in trouble. She could have gotten <laughs> in trouble. She could have trouble. got in trouble, yeah. But she needed something to take back to remind her of being able to go to President Johnson's compound. And she brought the vines and they thrived. I'm going to go look and see if they're still there. They thrived, and she only pulled, I think it was two or three no, roots up, it was just one, but you know, one. and I mean, she could grow anything. Well, she talked to them. Yeah. She talked to her plants. Sometimes she'd get mad, and she would not say things fit for little ears to hear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who's turn of mine, I oh. think, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? Right now, at this point of your life, and with what you've been through, good, bad, and indifferent, if you decided, I am going to write a book about my life, <laughs> what would the title of the book be? I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> I um, was raised by two hippies. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Uh, here's to the strangest life I've ever known. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> yep. Yep, that would definitely be it. I mean, I'm a Doors fan, and that's a Jim Morrison quote, but... I oh, mean, okay. okay. I, it's very fitting. <laughs> Man. Well, would it's it be... Uh, uh, you and I know a lot about biographies, mm. a lot of different things, but would you more have it in the line of... a uh, Drama, a comedy, uh, comedama, which is a drama comedy. I think with the life that I've had, I don't see how it couldn't be a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's got to be a comedy. It's yeah. got to be a comedy. All right, mm -hmm. good girl. Okay. Okay, is this my last one? I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, you have lived personally in Texas, Utah, and Missouri. And Florida. And Florida. And Kansas. And Kansas. Mm -hmm. Which one do you call home? As much as I hate, hate to admit this. Uh, I've, I've got to call Springfield, Missouri home. Well, I, Springfield will always be home mm -hmm. for me, yeah. but I was born there. Yeah. You know. Well, I spent 25 years there, the most, the biggest chunk of my life there. So, yeah, you know, it's the, the city I can go to and never get lost. And I know where I am at all times and I know the best places to eat and I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know the places to stay away from and yeah. Yeah. Would you ever move back there? That was I, be that would be it would take a, extreme circumstances for me to move back there. Yeah. But well, see, I can never move back there because of my health. I have to have the desert. But I I love Missouri. I love the forests. I love the water. I I you know, I was raised going into caves and stuff. But I she would, doesn't like the snow. But I hate the snow. But I didn't hate the snow until I moved to Utah. Spending 13 years in those winters. I prefer the Utah winters. They're not as bad. 
Okay. Your okay. turn. My turn. Okay. My favorite holiday is Christmas. Mm -hmm. I love decorating for Christmas. I love the idea that it's the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's why we should celebrate it. But I also like the commercial side because I like the decorations and the tree and everything. And from my understanding, your favorite holiday is Halloween. Yes. Why? <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I'm an October baby. You know, my birthday is October. I never thought about that. That's one good reason right it is, the top. Yeah, it is in October. So every year, you know, building up to my birthday, I'm surrounded by Halloween. I'm surrounded by changing colored leaves. I'm surrounded by, you know, candy. <laughs> and, you know, I... And she always had Halloween birthday parties. And I've always loved scary movies and I've always loved dressing up and I've always just really enjoyed it. It's just, you know, it just seems kind a fun of, time of year, fun time of year for me. Okay. For sure. And I think, uh, Christmas is probably my most disliked holiday just because of all the pressure that gets put on people at Christmas. You're right. Mm -hmm. People buy things for people that they don't want for prices that they can't afford to spend on them. And then there's a lot of focus on spending time with family and when you don't have family to spend time with, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. But, uh, okay, uh, that was your last question? I guess, I think. Was that your last thing out? Because I think we finished. Are we done? So that's all the questions that we had. And so that is going to be the end of our legacy video. And it's long. <laughs> well, it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, just wanted to say, you know, I hope all of our family that watches this really enjoys it. And... I hope that um, you all have a wonderful day, and I love your guts. <laughs> Bye. Me too. <laughs>